Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan. Welcome to the 19th episode of Our Brockton, and the title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton. It's our community, our home, and we're a welcoming, respectful, inclusive community known as the City of Champions. And there's a champion sitting here to my right right now, uh, former mayor, former counselor, uh, current counselor at large, was former counselor at large, then mayor, now back counselor at large, worked for former mayor uh, Jim Harrington as well, Moses Rodriguez, my friend. How are you? Thank you, brother. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, you wear many, many hats. Counselor, uh, proud dad, grandfather, Navy veteran, uh, and you really run the Cape Verde Association in a way that saves lives. Saves lives. For those that don't know, Counselor at Large, the man, uh, Moses Rodriguez, why don't you give a little update? Because you're a proud graduate of Brockton oh, High School. Brockton High School. You know, no, uh, no better place than that school, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, the mayor, uh, it's a pleasure being here with you. Uh, we've gotten some great things going on in this community. Uh, Brockton, uh, I tell people this all the time, I'd rather not live any place else mm. other than Brockton because Brockton has been home for me as a, as a teenager coming into this community from, uh, from Angola, mm -hmm. uh, Cape Verde, uh, but I've been in Brockton for all these years and this is, no, this is a home like no other. Mm. And uh, no matter what happens, sometimes I get very defensive when I hear people talking, uh, as the old saying goes, crap about our city and I, I take offense to it because I feel that um, we've got a great city here, great people. Uh, the diversity in this city is something that no other has. And it's something that needs to be applauded in the sense, instead of kind of looked at as a, you know, as a, as a hindrance mm -hmm. or as, a, as an embarrassment or as something that draws us back, we should look at it on the, on the plus side that we've got people coming from all over the place calling Brockton home. And, uh, and Brockton High is no exception to that beautiful rule. I mean, it's, I remember when I first went to college, I, you know, my college was smaller than mm. my, my high school. That's right. You know, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a great deal of pride and honor to say, hey, I come from the largest uh, high school on the East Coast. That's and right. we're still one of the largest high schools in this country. You know, I think one thing, Moses, um, for people that know you, um, I mean, your faith is important, right? I mean, you are St. Edith Stein, mm -hmm. you're a tri-parish, mm -hmm. you work diligently. Uh, you also work diligently at the Cape Verdean Association. Mm -hmm. So when COVID came and started killing Brocktonians, and as I sit here today, 434 loss of life, um, you know, Dr. Mondesir and the Board of Health and Dr. Herm and Steve Hook from Beamer, we meet every day at 1045. And I said, we need Moses' help. Mm -hmm. And you didn't hesitate. Right. I mean, that's you, you jumped in. Right. So could you tell the, the viewers um, weekly at the association what's going <clears> on? <throat> well, uh, uh Bob, when you, when you think about it, uh, when COVID came in, everything got shut down. And once we were able to reopen uh, in May, sometimes when things got a little bit better, we opened the doors to basically, as a community drop-in center, uh, taking care of people three days a week, mm -hmm. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. until around 4 or 5.30, or whenever people leave, basically, in the p.m. Uh, since May, uh, we're now looking at uh, about a year or so, we have seen or taken care of over 3,000 wow. families. Wow. Uh, just to give you a sense, those gift cards from Vicente mm -hmm. Groceries, uh, and again, uh, plug in for them yeah. because they kind of partner with us Absolutely. on that particular project as well. But, you know, we get foundations like the Boston Foundation, Eastern Bank, uh, Harbor One, Rockland Trust, basically giving the association some money. And now what we did, we have done is turn those, uh, those funds into gift cards. So just in gift cards alone, and these are $50 gift cards, we have given out over $100,000 worth of gift oh cards to God. the community. Because, wow. because in Brockton, if you're non-English speaking, or if you have some difficulties reaching out, you go to the association. Mm -hmm. You see Haitians up there, Brazilians, Cape Verdeans, uh, uh, basically Central Americans from all over the place. Uh, that actually go to that place because they know that that's it's an immigrant center and that's yep. what people go to and we do it proudly i mean if you look at uh, some of the things that we've done and, and i'll tell you what we're doing now in, ter in terms of kind of pushing some other things out but uh, when the unemployment uh, kicked in you know people were looking for to fill out you know forms for unemployment that whole project uh, is so encumbersome yes in it sense. is i mean for you to for you to go online, mind you, first of all, you got to be able to dominate a computer in order for you to go through the computer and sign on, get a, get a, a, a you know, basically an ID, uh, an email, and some of these other things. And it was very difficult for some of the people that we deal with to go in and through. Uh, and then you move into some housing help, 
in terms of, uh, of trying to get people some housing relief, in terms of you know, working with Naval Works uh, to get them some help. Uh, and and the, the, another piece that sometimes we kind of forget about, we talk about renter's assistance, mm -hmm. but one of the things that we found out um, is the vast majority of the people that we were dealing with were not renters. They were mortgage owners or house owners yep. that actually rely on these three deckers, two deckers for survival, right? Uh, because they buy the first, they live on the first floor. They rent out the, the other two floors to help them uh, pay the mortgage. Pay the mortgage. So when the people in the in the residence are not paying them rent, now you're dealing with a person who's in the process of losing their homes. Uh, now we're, you know, people are saying, oh, there's a moratorium in place where people are kind of being told, you know, you're not going to lose your home or whatever. But that has a uh, an endpoint. Yes, it does. And when that stuff comes out, I'm telling you, I think we're going to see uh, probably not what we saw back in 2008, 2007, 2008, but it's going to be something close to it. Yeah, it is. In terms of people It's coming. I mean, that's home. a fact. It's, it's going to happen. It's a tsunami. Because we're dealing with a lot of people. I mean, I met a woman the other day. Her mortgage was $4,000 a month, and wow. she relies on the two floors. They haven't paid her a dime. She has gone through every single credit card that she owns. Every single dollar that she actually has in savings, she's borrowed money from whoever can mm -hmm. lend her money mm -hmm. to pay her that mortgage, and she's basically saying, "I'm at a loss. Yeah. I don't know what to do." You know, so these are the the types of things that we're going to be seeing happening. And, and thank God we have that association that actually has been around since uh, 1977, uh, but more uh, in terms of a social service agency, uh, probably since the I think we bought that building back in 1999, okay, 1998, 1999, and it's been a, a staple in this community in a sense you know everybody knows what the association is well you're a staple uh, in the community everybody knows uh, moses rodriguez I've been around a right little while. i mean yeah. you used to work as a translator at the Brockton hospital, hospital right? right and then you worked for mayor harrington yeah. um you know <clears throat> you're a council at large and working for the archdiocese yeah. uh, your biggest job is being a husband and a dad yeah, and a grandfather yeah, yeah. one thing about you is 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 you bleed red and black. Yeah. You love Brockton, oh, you know? And that's why you and I get along so yeah. well. I mean, Brockton is home, right? Yeah. It's our home. Um, but one thing that I can say is that when we were trying to really figure out planning for COVID, one of the things we did was we reached out to you and you <coughs> coordinated a meeting downstairs mm -hmm. at Edith Stein mm -hmm. with Father Michael and some yep. of the other priests. Yep. Talk about that from then to now because lives have been saved. Yeah. Well, see, uh, when you think about it, uh, COVID is not like you've got a broken arm. Right. You know, no, it, you know, if you have a broken arm, everybody can see. And I'm, I'm talking about a broken arm because I just yeah. went through surgery yeah. a few days ago. You know, when you have a broken arm, everybody can see you have a broken arm. But when you have COVID, especially if you're, uh, if you're not symptomatic, you know, you don't have any symptoms, uh, people don't know that. And they don't take it as serious as they can. And one of the things that I, I found out from our community, again, it's not a visible disease, so you don't see who has it, who doesn't, doesn't have it. So it took a lot of educating, and yeah. I'm glad that we got together as yeah. a group and said, listen, uh, I, I think the doctor was talking, Dr. Herman yeah. was talking about somewhere 45 to close to 50% of those affected uh, infected by COVID were of Cape Verdean descent. That's right. Cape Verdean. So I remember that. When yeah. you said that, you and I just looked I'll at look, each other. It was like eye-opening. Yeah, it was. So, so one of the things that we had to do, we put together an education process through the church, through television, through the radios, to basically educate our community in terms of what to do, what not to do, and the numbers went down. Good. You know, thank God it actually went down. We lost a ton of people from that yeah. community. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we moved on to the next phase, which is the vaccination that yes. we're doing now with the health department. Uh, which which has been enormous in yes, a sense. Has. You know, we uh, I, I promised Dr. Um, uh, Montessori that we were going to do this on a regular basis, and we've done it. I think now we're going into at least two months yes. worth of vaccinations yes. every Thursday. Every Thursday. Yep. Every Thursday. People know that now. Yep. It gets announced in church. It gets announced on the radio. So every Thursday we're conducting a clinic. This is a free of charge clinic. Yep. Walk in, you welcome. walk in. Yep. It doesn't matter if you're here legally, illegally, nope. documented, or whatever nope. the deal is. Nope. We don't care about that Just stuff. Just get a shot in the arm. Yep. What we want to do is get you vaccinated, and that's what we're trying to do in this community. And we're vaccinated a ton of people, and we're going to continue to do this for as long as we can, or for as long as there's a need to do. Yes. And uh, that's something I think that that association has been in terms of a place that people can kind of gather and get that particular um, service. And, and they're gonna to continue to do that. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of that. Uh, the board is very supportive. The community is very supportive. The, the city has been very supportive. We get, you know, uh, masks and a variety of other stuff oh, yeah. from Steve Hook and everything oh, yeah. else. And, uh, you know, you've been very supportive. And I think we're gonna to continue to do this because you know what, we're in this boat together. Yeah, we are. You know, it doesn't matter you know, I, I often said it doesn't really matter how you got here, but you're here. We're here. And, and you need to help us paddle. 
yep. uh, this little boat called Brockton, so yep. we can move forward. And I think we need to do that and, uh, and move forward because pointing fingers isn't going to get us anywhere. No. You know, we, we sit here, ah, he didn't do this, he doesn't do this, no. he doesn't. You know what? That doesn't cure no. anything. You know, no. the fact is that we need people vaccinated. We need people to maintain whatever distancing they can. But look, look at this. We've yeah. been fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated, yep. You know, now we, we, you know, we're actually hitting this other spot where we're at, you know, and there's a lot more people it's good feeling conjugating yeah. the fact that, you know, you can go to church and, you know, enjoy your friends yeah. and family, getting some get togethers and stuff. We're looking at, you know, possibly doing something with the CV day, uh, day again, you yeah. know, try to figure this, you know, it might be at the high school this year because we, uh, we have to do that possibly this year, yeah. but maybe next year we'll yeah. go back to the way we used to do it. But we got to do that. We got to do that. And we got to do it together as a city because this is the only way we're going to be able to beat any of this thing up. I mean, what, one thing that I, I applaud you for, and, and I, I actually followed suit, when you got your shot, a picture was in the Enterprise, um, much like myself. I, I think that was a brilliant thing well, for course, you to do, Moses, because you're respected in the Cape Verdean community, in mm -hmm. the city as a whole. And if Moses Rodriguez is going to get a shot, why won't I get a shot? You know, and, and, and I think the Enterprise, they, they did it for you and me, which mm -hmm. was awesome. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, um, you just hit it on the head. We're all in this together, oh, yeah. right? So we're either going to win or lose together. And yeah. we're, we're city of champions, so we're not going to lose, yeah. right? We're not going to lose. But um, if anybody has, um, if some people might not even, where is the Cape Verde Association? I know where it is, but yeah. why don't, why don't we, why don't, where is it? Where's well, it located? We're, we're actually in one of the main drags in the city. Uh, we're at the uh, Montello Street, not too far away from St. Edith Stein. So if you look at St. Edith Stein, we're like te technically right across from yep. it on Montello the Street. The old fire station. The old fire station. Yep. Yep. We've been there now, it's, you know, like I said, for over 20 years yep. now. You know, we own the building. Uh, again, it's a landmark in the city. Uh, folks from overseas know it. F folks from the, the various immigrant communities know it. We're in the process of, you know, we're going back to, you know, doing the, uh, you know, we've got a great relationship with the school department. Yes, you do. Uh, when you when you sit down and think about it, I, I brought this up the other day at the council meeting when everybody else is doing Zoom this, Zoom that. Last year, we did a, a summer program, a, a live summer program. Mm -hmm. We've reduced the number of kids so we yep. can kind of separate them. But we did a live summer program. We're going back, uh, again, with the help of the school department. We used the uh, the Gilmore School. Yep. We're going to go back and do a summer program. The one the year prior to COVID, we had almost 300 kids in this program. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, and when you think about it, again, it was like the UN. You know, you had kids from every. We had white kids, black kids, purple kids, yeah. yellow kids. Just you know, Brockton because kids. It was Brockton, Brockton kids, kids. You know, and that's what we're going to do again. Uh, my daughter actually uh, runs that program, mm -hmm. the Marissa that uh, yeah. works for the schools uh, here in the city. And we're going to do that. We hired a bunch of kids. Last year we employed 29 kids. I think this year we're going to do about 35. Excellent. Um, and these are Brockton juniors and seniors uh, with some college kids mixed in. Provide them with some income so yeah. that they actually have something to do. Uh, but it's a way to learn, you know, how to work with the younger kids and stuff. And it's been a successful program. And Mike Thomas has been great, yeah. great with that because we kind of do it in partnership. Uh, it's not because we don't make any money out of it. Right. Because whatever we get out of it, we charge the, the participant a little fee because if we take them on a field trip, you know, those, those things yeah, cost subsidize money. subsidize it, yeah. To subsidize yep. the program. Yep. And also whatever uh, uh, comes back into the program, we, we hire more kids. Yep. Because the idea is to basically hire youngsters, yep. young people from the community, give them something to do. Because let me tell you something, Bob. I think as long as we keep the young people busy during the summer months, yep. our, city, our city will do well. And I think it's an important thing for us to keep in mind that jobs, 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 jobs is a way to kind of do that. And I think we need to uh, uh, make sure we continue to do that and keep these kids busy, keep them off the streets. We have to. Do whatever we can. I mean, to. COVID has changed everything, right? Yeah. Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. Our kids are not the same yeah. as, they, as they were before COVID. Yeah. But, um, you know, the city is also looking to hire as well. I'll do a plug right now. Um, we're doing our summer parks program. Mm -hmm. We're doing our DPW. We're going to be looking for lifeguards at the pools. Um, we're also doing um, the mayor's uh, after dark program as well, and Brockton Public Schools is looking to hire as well. So go on the city's website, brockton.ma.us or bps.org as well. Uh, we, we actually came down to the end here, but yeah. um, one other thing is I want to thank you for your dedication. You're a council at large. You serve the whole city. You mm -hmm. do it well. You're running again, right? Yeah. So, so right, keep going. Keep going. That train's <laughs> going to keep going on the track, but I want to thank you for your commitment to the city, your friendship, your leadership, no, and let's here, keep going. Thank Same you, my here, friend. Thank, Thank you. you much. Again, you've watched uh, the 19th episode of Our Brockton. Uh, it really was my honor and privilege to have Councilor at Large, my friend, uh, and just a great Brocktonian, Moses Rodriguez. 
Um, his better half, Maria Rodriguez. Hi, Maria. <laughs> but um, I also just want to uh, say that um, the next episode, we will have Superintendent of Schools Mike Thomas to talk about how we have been working diligently to get our BPS kids back on track uh, because of COVID. So thank you for watching. It is an honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. Be well, stay safe. Thank you.